All right, here we go again. Hey everybody, Zach Gortz here with RevZilla and welcome to another episode of Daily Rider, where we learn about motorcycles as we ride. Our special guest today is especially special. And I know I often say that, but this here, this is our very own Battle Toad. That is a 2009 Kawasaki Versus 650 that we bought for $800 to take to a track day for an episode of CTXP. So if you haven't seen that episode, you should watch it for a little bit of background. It's no real secret that around here we're big fans of the Versus 650. So how about one with 28,000 miles and a bunch of crashes and subsequent modifications? You probably have a lot of questions. Is it safe? Will it wheelie? The answers to all those questions and more right now. <laughs> all right, everybody, here we have it. The Battle Toad. Time has finally come. Uh, first things first, though, um, if you have not seen that episode of CTXP, we'll drop a card here in the uh, upper part of the window there. You can click on that link. It's also in the description of this video in case you're interested. Um, so you can watch this bike as well as a Honda CBR 300 with a deep, dark secret take on a public track day. <laughs> Worth watching, in my humble opinion. Um, but anyway, now we can get on to the analysis and daily ride of the Battle Toad. So, a 649cc parallel twin engine, um, kind of a handsome swing arm. I kind of like the sort of like banana cut um, alloy swing arm, makes room for the underslung exhaust there. Um, yeah, it's always something I've liked about the Versus is uh, the underslung exhaust, mostly because if you have saddlebags on there, neither one of the saddlebags has to give up room for the exhaust, so you get more storage space. Um, 300 mil rotors here at the front um, and some pretty basic Tokiko um, calipers there. Um, the Dunlop GPR 300 rubber was new for that track day. It, we did treat ourselves, uh, even though they were budget bikes, to, um, to new tires. I believe this set of tires, front and rear, was $173. Not a, bad, uh, not a bad rubber option. Good enough for intermediate track day, in my opinion. The real crown jewel of the Battle Toad, though, is this whole uh, front area here. It's got a round headlight, which of course is not stock. It's got these driving lights, which here we go. We can, uh, can I start it from here? There we go. All right, the Battle Toad lives. So yeah, it's got these, uh, it's got these sweet driving lights that uh, when you hit the <laughs> high beams, they turn on, they're quite bright actually. And then uh, yeah, this, um, this bailing wire mounting system for the dash. Probably not going to catch on with major manufacturers, but um, it does the trick, as we will see. And then, of course, no windscreen, no fairing, none of that jazz. <laughs> it, uh, in a lot of ways, very much looks like an $800 motorcycle. The signals, for example, are it, like down mounted down here, <laughs> which I, don't know, I actually think is kind of cool. The previous owner of this bike had a little bit of fun with the fact that it was crashed and it was getting cobbled back together. Um, I appreciate it. It's got a lot of personality. Okie doke. Here we go. I think we're ready. I think we're finally ready for Battle Toad Daily Ride. So let us get it on. Some basic specs for the Battle Toad. Uh, horsepower and torque numbers uh, feel kind of meaningless at this point because <laughs> who knows how much power it actually makes with uh, you know the better part of 30,000 miles on the clock and a checkered past you might say um, but I think it was rated at about 62 horsepower something like that I think 62 um, and maybe 45 foot-pounds of torque something like that it's uh, you know power and torque numbers that often get kind of uh, they get kind of blurry because I don't know it doesn't it never really feels like it matters much <laughs> you know if you're if you're on a bike that has some sort of horsepower war or like the horsepower number is a big piece of the the bike's persona you know like it's a sport bike or like oh it's 150 horsepower ADV bike or whatever it is um but with bikes like this I don't know it always is like 60 60 70 whatever I'm like it's almost like who cares right and this versus in particular is lighter than your average versus from 2009, I would say, on account of removing all the bodywork and everything. Uh, I put it on the Daily Rider scales, it weighed in at 439 pounds, and I believe it um, was around 460 when it was new. Um, 
full of gas. So yeah, 20 pounds lighter, I think, approximately. So that's not bad. Um, and on the topic of fuel, um, the big green gas tank here in front of me holds five gallons of gas. So yeah, pretty, um, pretty spacious gas tank, um, which of course hurts it on the wet weight front, but uh, you yeah, know, this is the Versa 650 Super Legera. So um, no, not, not too worried about weight, <laughs> of course. Another spec worth talking about, oh, green light. Another spec worth talking about while we're at the red light, which didn't last, is the seat height, which uh, rated, I believe, at 33 inches, 33.1 inches, which is kind of tall, actually. And of course, the Versus is tall is one of its things, you know? It's meant to be approachable and has definitely grown into sort of a budget, luxury, split the categories a little bit there. But back in 2009, it was uh, pretty unapologetically tall and gangly. It was the, the poor man's Ducati Multistrada of that era. And, uh, and yeah, so a 33.1 inch seat height is not especially low or approachable, especially considering the bike weighs 450 pounds, depending on your lightness upgrades. But, um, but even, even with all that stuff, it's, it's pretty approachable. Just something to think about if you're uh, shorter in stature about a versus whether it's crashed or not. A little bit tall. We here at Revzilla paid $800 for this Versus, but of course MSRP was a little higher than that when it was new. I think it was uh, about seven grand, 7,100 bucks maybe, something like that, um, which uh, yeah, is kind of a steal. I think a, a new Versus now is nine, just about nine grand maybe. Anyway, um, 7,000 bucks for this sucker brand new, $800 uh, used on the used market, which was, uh, it was a good find. I'll admit that. I don't think there are a lot of Versus 650s out in the world in this kind of shape for 800 bucks, but maybe 12, 1500 bucks though. So from an ergonomic standpoint, it's darn comfortable. Like I said, seat maybe feels a little high if you're a shorter person, but once you're in the saddle, my goodness, is it comfortable. Good leg room, uh, seat is pretty comfortable. This seat in particular uh, does feel like it's soaked up a fair number of UV rays over the course of its 28,000 miles, or perhaps even between those 28,000 miles when it was sitting in the sun. So the, the seat um, cover is kind of crusty and hard, which means I slide around on it pretty easily, <laughs> which I don't really like. But anyway, aside from that, very comfortable place to sit. Nice commanding riding position. You're sort of upright, but it's a little bit sporty. Uh, yeah, good, good as always on uh, Kawasaki's part, the Versus 650. Again, specific to this Versus 650, you might be looking at my hands and thinking, hey, is his left hand slightly ahead of his right hand? <laughs> uh, and the answer to that is yes. The bar is a little tweaked. Um, so it's sort of, you ride with one hand ahead of the other one, uh, which is a little bit weird. Can't say it's a modification that I would recommend for someone else's Versus. I, like I, can, see my, I can see my headlight in that Camry's bumper. And it feels like it's high. Let me adjust it. There we go. Just adjust it down a little bit. That's another um, feature, you might say, of the Versus 650 Super Legera, is uh, the ability to adjust the headlight as you ride. So you know, if you get a particularly heavy passenger, jump on the back, just reach forward and uh, rotate that headlight down. This is the future, people. Anyway, this is the part where we usually talk about fuel mileage and. I haven't logged a ton of miles on the street on the Battle Toad, so I haven't done a, a lot of calculations for fuel mileage, but 50, 55 MPG is um, pretty safe to assume with a, a Versus of this vintage. I think that the Battle Toad is probably slightly worse on account of a kind of a crunchy chain and, you know, no fairing. I feel like that probably hurts it a little bit. <laughs> Over the bridge, Battle Toad. Are we getting a little bit of mist on my visor here? It's like uh, some sort of choppy bumps along this section. Good time to talk about suspension compliance. The old Battle Toad's pretty good, actually. Um, yeah, not, not, <laughs> it's not fancy suspension. Um, and uh, yeah, it's not, uh, it's not ultra high spec luxury springs and valves in there, but uh, I don't know, it does the trick. It's just sort of like all in the, in the versus ethos. Just, um, there's nothing super special. It just all works pretty well. I don't know. This is also the part where we talk about mirrors. 
And you may have noticed that the Battletoad has some pretty funky mirrors. It's got these little bar end mamma jammas, um, tiny little bar end mirrors, the big sort of fish eye. So they're a little, they're a little weird. Uh, they're dead smooth, I'll say that. Um, there, there are some vibes uh, in the pegs and seat and, and handlebar, especially above maybe 5,500 RPM if you want to cruise a little faster. Uh, but yeah, the mirrors are actually quite good. I don't actually know what brand these are. <laughs> uh, they're not, they're, they're, a little, they're a little weird to get used to because yeah, anything that's more than 30 feet behind you is basically a little speck in your mirror. But I'm impressed at how, um, at how tidy they are. I'll say that. Okie doke, time to trundle through the neighborhood. Much more road construction. We'll try and get our footless stops. I don't know, what do we think about the Battletoad? I got high hopes, actually. Pretty well-balanced bike. Yeah, first one right on the money, Battletoad. <laughs> um, I will say the clutch lever and cable, the clutch situation is not necessarily awesome. Uh, it, um, yeah, as a cable clutch, it was super crunchy and crappy when I first got it. Um, I pumped some lube down the cable sheath and that helped a lot. Ah, screwed up that one. One for two. Um, so yeah, the, uh, the clutch is a, a little more difficult than uh, your average versus 650, I would say. Uh, I could really use a fresh, uh, fresh cable and lever. But no excuses, no excuses. Here we go, here we go. Ah! Blew that one too. So one thing about the Versus on the topic of trying to do these footless stops, got an itch on my nose, pardon me, ah, is uh, that the fuel tank is fairly high. You kind of sit down in the bike a little bit and this fuel tank sits up um, pretty high and that allows you to sit a little bit closer to the handlebar, makes it a little bit more comfortable, allows the wheelbase to be a little bit shorter, the bike to be a little bit tidier, but uh, it does make the, the fuel load sits up pretty high. And of course it's five gallons of gas. So when it's full, that's, um, you know, whatever, about 30 pounds of, of gasoline. Oh, just got that one. So all that is to say, uh, when the tank is full, which is almost full right now, um, it's a lot of weight up high. And, uh, and it's a little bit of a tall bike as we talked about before. So I think that might be contributing to my footless stop struggles. We're two for four right now. Let's see how this one goes. Ugh, son of a beast. Distracted by the electric Kia. Um, another thing that the Versus 650, Ninja 650, this uh, Kawasaki 650 platform is kind of famous for is a herky jerky throttle response, which it does, it's a little bit, again, again, uh, the on off is, is not great. Um, just about every era of of Kawasaki uh, 650, as far back as I can remember. Um, just yeah, the on-off throttle response is not great, um, which is a shame because in general, the power curve of the engine is quite, I don't know, usable and friendly and, and um, uh, yeah, sort of eager. It's good. All right, green light. Come on, battle toad. Wide open on the battle toad. Rap. <laughs> that pretty good, uh, not bad little punch there. Sounds like a sewing machine, but um, yeah, pulls forward pretty well. That's no, okay. I don't, I don't know why she's apologizing. I had a stop sign. There's a six fifty woolly. I get a weird feeling from the back end. I, I think maybe I think the back tire pressure is low. Should check that before my ride. If I was a good motorcycling citizen, please don't pull out in front of me. Thank you. The ride, lover's lane. So we can talk about passenger accommodations. I haven't had anyone on the back of the Battle Toad. I don't think. Did I go on a ride with? Whatever. We know that the Versa 650 is a pretty, uh, pretty comfortable sport touring machine and the passenger accommodations on this bike are not too bad. Um, so yeah, I think if you, if you have this bike, it'd be a good one to be passenger on. If you have the Battle Toad in particular, you might have some struggles getting someone to join you on a ride. 
if they have, uh, you know, if they're discerning at all as far as aesthetics and that kind of thing. All right, as we approach our twisty road section here, we're behind a white Toyota Prius, so needless to say, the pace is set. A pretty high bar. Man, it feels like dump back there. Am I getting a flat tire? Something's going on. There's like 20 pounds of air in that back tire. This isn't good. I was clowning that Prius, but we're actually, uh, we're, we're kind of cooking along here behind these cars. Just, uh, uh, respect. Uh, but more to the point, I was <laughs> sorry. I'm here to talk about the motorcycle, right? Not the cars in front of me. Um, the Versa 650 in general is a very impressive bike on a twisty road. I, I say impressive. It's not like you're gonna blow anyone's socks off. It just doesn't look like a bike. Maybe this one in particular. Although, you know, this is a super leger. But in general, the bike doesn't look like something that would work very well on a twisty road. But it just, it's really nicely balanced. Um, and it is tall and, you know, it's a little bit gangly. But, um, but the, the chassis just works so well. You can sit right in the middle of the seat. You don't even have to move around in the saddle or do a bunch of body English and try and look like Mark Marquez. You can just plonk yourself in the middle of the seat and rip through curves and drag your toes all day. It's just, it's comfortable and sporty. It's just an, it's an excellent platform. This particular Versus 650, the Battle Toad, um, of course, went to a track day with yeah, some amount of success. Again, if you haven't watched the CTXP episode, I would encourage you to do so. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I got my knee down at the racetrack and burned around on $175 worth of tires. Um, so yeah, it's uh, as far as how it handles, it's, it's I think it punches above its weight, certainly um, from a cultural perspective. <laughs> All right, I think we did pretty well covering the Battle Toads sporting prowess and we can uh, cut onto some surface streets here let's go battle toad okay i was gonna try and pop a wheelie but that didn't happen maybe i'm roaching the clutch by messing around with it sorry about that dude approaching a red light we're gonna talk about brakes battle toads brakes 28,000 mile old brakes with rubber lines. Here we go. Which is still a little stoppy. Whew. I tell you, nothing this battle toad can't do. Is the, I don't have a neutral light. I actually just realized that. Do I? No, mid neutral now. At least the fuel gauge works, that's good. But in general, the brakes aren't bad. There's not a ton of bite initially on the, the lever pull on the battle toad. Uh, which will happen with old brakes, but uh, pretty pretty decent power. The brakes are kind of um, I don't know, kind of the kind of the battle toad in a microcosm. You know, like the levers bent and the pads are just about worn out, and it's the the whole situation is a little bit sketchy, but it actually works pretty well. I mean, yeah, the brakes are, uh, you know, they work better than they probably should, <laughs> considering how they look. Um, and uh, yeah, the, like I said, the bike is kind of the same way. It's like scarred and chipped and dinged and dented and shredded and modified. And uh, But in general, I don't know. It's got good bones. Good, strong battle toad bones. Another red light here. Let's see if we can get another stoppy out of this mamma jamma. Woo. Locked the front wheel. <laughs> No ABS on the Battle Toad. Um, anyway, the engine. Um, yeah, just the sound it makes. I don't know. I've just been always kind of uninspired by um, by the sound of a, of a 180 crank parallel twin. Um, but I will say the 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 Ninja 650 versus 650 engine. It does share a sort of attribute with the Ninja 400, in my opinion, which is that it's it's kind of playful. Like it 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 has this sort of like willingness and and um, I don't know, spring in its step uh, when when you do rev it up a little bit, which we'll experiment with here when the light goes green. Uh, yeah, just, I don't know, it just wants to have fun, even though I don't love the way it sounds or, or feels particularly. <laughs> little Willy versus 650 power Willy. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, short wheelbase, about 55 inch wheelbase, I think. So actually does pretty good wheelies. Hopefully we'll get one of those later, we'll see. 
one other thing I wanted to address, um, I got a few questions on social media when I posted about this bike, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, basically saying, how do you know if the bike's gonna be good? If you buy a thousand dollar bike or whatever, a really cheap bike, you know, like how do you know it's not totally fucked? Pardon my French, I couldn't come up with another word. <laughs> As Ari found out in that CTXB episode, it can be dicey. And I think one of the reasons that this this battle toad turned out to be a good purchase um, was that it was being ridden. Um, the person, you know, might be crashed and ugly and all that jazz, but it was uh, it was operational, being ridden around. We got lucky in so much as the previous owner of this bike had their stuff together and they, you know, maintained the bike well enough that um, kept it healthy. Uh, but yeah, that's my, that's my big piece of advice is that if the most recent thing that happened to the bike was that it was crashed, be very careful. If it was crashed and then put back together and someone's been using it, that's a, that's a sign that there's a little bit more hope, I think. All right, here we go. Onto the dirt with the battle toad. <laughs> There's some people that have been looking forward to this. Ah! Yeah, getting swayzy. <laughs> uh, I mean, the Versus 650 is pretty fun for um, plodding down dirt road. Uh, these tires are not very fun for doing this kind of thing. They're like skittering all over the, <laughs> the gravel here. Um, but yeah, Versus 650. Oh boy, yeah, it's a little sketchy. Versus 650 is. Uh, pretty good for um oh no someone blocked our jump oh they don't want us to take the jump anymore very sad very very sad nice we'll do a little willy here <laughs> a little mini jump oh and this is all different too oh, someone came through this looks like a jump i don't know what this is but i'm gonna hit it <laughs> all right that was actually a pretty big jump didn't bottom the suspension though not bad it's probably because it's so gosh darn light this versus 650. Super Legera, as I said. <laughs> All right, let's see if you can do a Willy. Come on. Come on, Versus. Do your thing. Oh, yeah. Look at it go. Look at it go. Third gear. Oh, we got to put it down. We got to put it down. We could go forever. It's like it's got 100 horsepower, people. Holy smokes. What a machine. <laughs> and of course, if you do take the bike down a dirt road and you paid 800 bucks for it, well, you're probably not too worried about rocks pinging off the exhaust or the oil filter or whatever. Uh, so I guess you could say that's a benefit. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, there's 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 no two ways about it. If you got a if you got a, a cheap machine that's not uh, you're not super worried about, <laughs> you can uh, you can arguably you know beat it up a little bit and still feel like it's a good value. I had someone else on social media say something like, um, it seems like a waste of a nice bike to get it dirty or have it on an adventure. You know, like, why not just use an old bike um, that costs less? And I, I don't agree with that, you know? I think the, the best use of a shiny new Ducati is to be on a racetrack, burning through tires and brake pads, and if it gets crashed, that's, that's a shame. Scuffed bodywork and, you know, bent handlebar or whatever. Like, that's what the bike is for. Same thing with a, an Africa Twin, you know, like, Get it dirty, tip it over. Like, oh, I, like I paid, you know, fifteen thousand bucks for this bike. I don't want to tip it over. Yeah, I get it. You know, like it's, it's, you don't want to damage property that you've paid for. I understand that, but also, that's what the machines are made to do. These are these are tools of uh, of adventure and and uh, adrenaline. That's what they're for. I say. All right, almost to the office. See if we can back it into this little turn here. Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah, you certainly can. Except that is the sound of a tire that is very low. I hope I'm not actually getting a flat tire, but we're almost to the office. So all good. <laughs> but yeah, the Versus did not have ABS, which means you can back it in like crazy, which I'm not going to do because of the picketers. Again, I don't want to freak those guys out. Um, but yeah. I've been doing it a lot. It's pretty fun. <laughs> uh, having fun, kids. We're having fun. Okay, you turn test. Uh-oh. Oh, we don't have a lot of parking spaces. Oh, geez. This is a tricky business. All right, we're going to have to try and do U-turn within parking spaces, and we can't hit this Mercedes, and we don't want to hit that van either. Come on, Battle Toad. 
Can you do it? Oh yeah, well within two parking spaces. Above average, just like every other category, basically. <sighs> I tell you, wheelies, jumps, U-turns, balance. And it did it all with who knows how much air is in that rear tire, but not enough. Pretty embarrassing mistake to make, I gotta say. All right, let's take a listen to this engine I don't like the sound of. So it's a little, uh, it's a little leaf blower. If it leaves here, you can. <laughs> uh, yeah, like I said, kind of an appliance, but a very uh, willing and eager and, uh, and fun engine to use, despite uh, sounding like something from Black & Decker. Okie dokie team, time for Instagram questions as always. Here we go, we're jumping right in. Um, this is from 99F150. I wonder what kind of truck this person has. Anyway, um, did you do a quote Dave makeover and fix safety related issues, brakes, tires, etc., or did you just go full send <laughs> with what you got? Um, this is a good question. So Dave is a reference to a CTXP episode from 2020 where we got an old GSX-R1000. If you haven't looked for that, check it out, please. Um, Dave the Jixer, for everyone's information, got a full makeover. I mean, Dave got new suspension, new foot pegs, new seat, new, um, you know, clip-ons, new grips, new, like every part of the body that, uh, every part of the bike that you touch with your body was fixed and suspension and tires, chain and sprockets, the whole mamma jamma. Dave cost us about three grand, 3,500 bucks, I think. Uh, and ended up, we probably put $5,000 worth of stuff on that bike. Um, so yeah that bike got a full makeover as 99F150 points out. The Battletoad, to answer your question, no such thing. What the Battletoad got was uh, lube on the throttle cables, lube on the clutch cable, uh, I believe a um, front brake fluid flush, uh, fresh oil, and um, fork seals. We spent $47 on fork seals because it was leaking um, and that would be a safety issue. But other than that, the battle oh and the tires we didn't mention that other than that the battle toad remains um the deal we made for the ctxp episode in which the battle toad participated was no aftermarket parts so you could change fluid and you could fix things that needed to be fixed for safety's sake but you weren't allowed to put anything on there no foot pegs no new levers no chain and sprockets nothing that so as it sits basically uh, is what we got aside from fluids and fork seals Okay, I want to say Ari, but most people usually say Ari. So Ari the Adventurer says, how does this model versus compare to the 2015 update? Right. Um, so a few things happened in 2015. The And I'm not going to touch on all of it right now because nobody wants that. But the big ticket items. Uh, it got a rubber mounted engine. Um, and that uh, made it quite a bit smoother. It got a half gallon more fuel capacity in the tank up from five gallons to 5.5. Um, and it got made slightly more comfortable, I think. I wanna say the foot pegs were moved down a little bit or the handlebars were moved up, something like that. I kind of forget. Um, it's the same basic structure of the bike, but in 2015, it did get a makeover to make it, uh, oh, the, I, I know what it was. The, um, the fairing got a lot bigger and the styling changed, of course, and then you got adjustable uh, windscreen in 2015 i believe that was that update so yeah it just it sort of started leaning more towards um touring bike uh so still a sporty good platform post 2015 bikes that's probably the one i would buy if i was going to get one but uh this era is a little bit more raw you know it's like a little bit fizzier than uh than than the new ones which i kind of appreciate maybe that made it better at the track i don't know uh ed pertiera ed pertiera uh, asks, would you recommend this as a first bike? <sighs> you know, this versus 650, this battle toad. Yeah, I think I would. Why not? I don't know. It's, it's, it's safe. It's sound. <laughs> it's, um, it's just horribly ugly, which I think is good for a first bike. Um, I know a lot of people ride motorcycles because they're cool. And I would lie if I said that I hadn't you know benefited from <laughs> from the cool factor of motorcycles over the years but i don't ride motorcycles because i want to look cool I, th I think it's fun and i enjoy it and i think it's good transportation and it makes me smile and i like trying to be good at it um so yeah i think that if you want this bike as a first bike then that is a good sign that you're chasing motorcycling for the right reasons as far as i'm concerned um 
Yeah, plus if you tip it over, whatever. Next up, uh, Ivan Vram, I've, Ivan Vram uh, asks, I honestly like the looks of this one over the first gen versus, right, yeah, well, you know, um, I, I, the round headlight's actually not bad. I think it's it even looks better than an ER6N, in my opinion. Uh, I think it's kind of it's kind of handsome. I know we're in the era of round headlights now, but you know, it's uh, I, I agree. Anyway, the question from Ivan Brand is uh, also: Is this better than a Z650? Um, so the short answer is no. Um, Z650 is more approachable. It's smaller. Um, the seat is much lower. And I think that, in general, for people, would be seen as a very good thing. For me, I don't know, I'd take the Battletoad. I like the tall seat because I'm tall. Um, and uh, like I said, I don't care what bikes look like particularly. So, yeah, um, I, I, I would say the short answer is a Z650 is better than this because it's more approachable. And, of course, doesn't look like it fell down the up escalator. But, um, you know, a certain, a certain type of person might want uh, a Battletoad. And that certain type of person might be me. <laughs> Nate Baird has a great question. What tape do you prefer for seat repairs? <laughs> I love this question. Um, so yeah, this tape was on here. I believe this is Gorilla Tape. Um, and Gorilla Tape is pretty good because it's the adhesive stands up pretty well to changes in humidity. Um, and it's waterproof on the outside so it doesn't seep through. If you use something like gaff tape, it can be attractive to use because it's very flexible. But um, yeah, uh, Gorilla Tape is sort of my go-to for these kind of uh, seat repairs. And it looks like the previous owner, same thing. So there you go. <laughs> I hope that helps. All right, last question is from Phil Herbert, who asks, if you had that $200 to make it an even grand, what would you do to it? Oh, I love this question. Great question, Phil. Um, let's see here. <laughs> you know, you don't want to ruin the aesthetic, obviously. Um, so yeah, I would I would have to leave that. I don't want to paint it or anything. I think I would I would come up with a system for the um, for the dash. I'd, I'd make a mount or buy a mount or you know something. I, I would probably drill holes in the in the top triple here and build a little um, a little steel plate steel bracket or something like that to hold the dash right here because I think that might make a little bit more sense. Um, next thing I would do would be chain and sprockets because the chain's pretty kinked up. Um, so yeah, a little bit of a little bit of maintenance there. And then uh, heated grips. That's what I do. Heated grips. Because, um, yeah, I, I, every bike should have heated grips. Why not the battle toad? Gosh darn it. <laughs> okay. Thanks as usual for all the excellent questions that you've submitted to me on Instagram. Please keep those coming. Bear with me here. We're going to put the battle toad on the Daily Rider leaderboard, and then I'll let you go. Hold up. All right, everybody, here we are back in Revzilla West. Um, we're interrupting uh, an episode of the shop manual, but I wanted to show you what they're up to. It's pretty cool. It's thread repair. Ari's gonna teach you how to fix uh, stripped and busted threads. He's got a bunch of blocks of aluminum here, all signed up. And the three-legged Chihuahua, the, um, the CBR 300 that co-starred with the Battletoad uh, on that track day episode of <laughs> CDXB. Anyway, so they're working on that. Um, and that means that we don't have a lot of time to get down to brass tacks here at the Daily Rider leaderboard and talk about this Versus 650 Battle Toad. You could argue that it's more comfortable than an RS660, for sure. In fact, it is. You, you can't argue that an RS660 is more comfortable than the Battle Toad, I don't think. <laughs> um, but the RS660's got some stuff, and I feel like it, uh, it's earned its place on the board. Um, Arguably most comparable down here. You got your KTM 950 Supermoto from 2006. That is my personal bike in my garage at home. It's got a 35 inch seat height and no ABS. So we gotta be honest about its approachability in so much, in, in so much as that it's not very approachable. <laughs> and that's why it's down the board a little bit, you know? So it's, it's only fair. It breaks my heart a little bit because I'd rather ride my 950 Supermoto than most of the bikes up here, frankly, but I get it. So the Battle Toad. It looks like a dumpster fire, um, but it's pretty comfortable and works pretty well. No ABS, no safety features, no comfort features. <sighs> what do we think? I think it's better than my bike. I'm sad to admit it from a value proposition standpoint and it's arguably a little bit more comfortable and it's definitely more approachable. Um, and the only thing my bike's got over it is heated grips, which I don't really know how much that counts. So Interceptor 650, MT-03. No, I don't think we can give the nod to the Battletoad there. Mm. How did the RS660 end up so far up there? Not very comfortable. It does have a cool little platform though to strap stuff to on the back when you take off the passenger seat. Maybe that's the reason. Anyway, here we go. Here's where it's gonna go. The Battletoad just below 
the Interceptor 650 from Royal Enfield. I'm giving it the nod over the Triumph Daytona 765 Moto 2 because it's a pretty uncomfortable bike, even though it's handsome and fast and has lots of features. And Triumph's Rocket 3, which is a personal favorite of mine. I love that bike, but it does weigh between 3,000 and 3,500 pounds. I don't remember exactly how much, but anyway, it's very heavy. So yeah, I'm giving the nod to the Battletoad. It's going right here. Kind of a mid-pack finish. Um, not bad for a 2009 bike that cost 800 bucks, I would say. So that does it for this episode of Daily Rider. I hope you uh, in enjoyed yourself. I hope you'll check your tire pressure. That's an important thing to do. Do as I say, not as I do there. Um, I hope you had fun. Hope you enjoyed the wheelies, et cetera. And I hope to see you next time on Daily Rider. See everybody. 11 pounds of air. That can't be right. Good Lord. There's the nail right there. Wow, we just made it, you guys. Holy smokes. <laughs> oh my God. Wonder how long that's been there. All right. Check your tire pressures, kids. Very, very important to do that. Good thing these tires were cheap. All right, Battletoad. <laughs> Christ. <laughs>